Well, Huddersfield took the lead, but it seems an awfully long time ago. But back came Manchester City in that first half and then uh, finished it off with a couple of goals late in the game. But Huddersfield did themselves proud, considering they didn't have a first team out there and Pep Guardiola. Uh, will be relatively happy and his team are through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup uh, where they'll travel to face Middlesbrough and uh, all in all um, an impressive performance from Manchester City. Yeah, particularly going forward, some of the forward play was, um, was superb, they got the goals they deserved, they could have scored a few more um, from Huddersfield's point of view, um, as you just said, with them changing the team around. Um, they did reasonably well, I thought their, their first half performance, particularly the first 20 or 25 minutes was, uh, was exceptional and then I think one or two players would have caught um, scouts' eyes looking at them this evening, I think, particularly um, Billing in the first half. Yeah, yeah, there is um, Guardiola, and uh, I suppose in many ways the fact that Huddersfield scored early and made it a little bit of a game, a little bit interesting, probably better for him in a way, gets a bit more competitive. Yeah, and you look at the reaction from the players, they reacted really well, started taking control of the game, um, creating chances at will, and thoroughly deserved the win tonight. Uh, particularly impressed with the forward players, like Alan said. You know, very bright, direct, real pace about them and, and zest. It was uh, yeah, very good to see. Uh, not obviously uh, Huddersfield's uh, first choice starting line yeah. generally, uh, Kevin, but it, it, it gives them a little bit of an idea of what it entails being a Premier League footballer. Yeah, it certainly does. Just just watch them tonight. You're watching City this season. They're entertaining, regardless of what we say about them defensively, about the goalkeeping issues that they've got. But they're certainly entertaining. But you say Huddersfield know full well that if they do get up and they were to get up, they've got a they've got a hell of a job on if they're going to come and compete at this level. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to go, come here a few times this season with with Champions League games as well as as matches here. I mean. He likes to outscore the opposition, <laughs> doesn't seem to worry too much if there are mistakes Absolutely. at the back. Shouldn't, shouldn't we relish that? I think we should. You know, I was, like I said earlier, I was at the Monaco game in the Champions League last week and yeah, just too. the way they played and the, the excitement in yeah. the stadium, the reaction from the players was superb. And he's one of them, he leaves spaces in behind, so you're always going to get a yeah. chance, but defensively they have got to switch on and be yeah. more concentrated. Yeah, the further you go in the competition, then the better the opposition yeah. comes. And when you keep on giving chances away, even Huddersfield had two very good chances tonight. One from the uh, the corner there yeah. in the second half, and another one. They had one just before half time. But if you give those against top opposition, then they punish you. Yeah, but you know if they can outscore, that's his philosophy. It's always been his philosophy, hasn't it? In a way, it's a little bit like Kevin Keegan when he was at Newcastle. You know, expansive <coughs> yeah. football, exciting football. We'll score four, you can score three, but we'll have a good day. Yeah. Yeah, great well, for us to watch. Well, it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's back to my point before, they are great to watch. Yeah. But even, like say, watching them at the level they were playing at last week against Monaco, we know the better side will really mm. will severely punish when they play so open and, uh, and attacking. Scored three, but City scored five. Well, exactly. But that's what it is. That's that's the thing. But yeah. I, I think if, if they're playing against better sides on, on a better day as well, uh, I think yeah. they did struggle, yeah. Is okay. that not almost why every club in, in Europe wanted Pep? Because yeah. they want that exci exciting yeah. football. It's not just winning football that you get, it's, it's also entertaining football. I guaranteed you goals in the second half. I was starting to get a bit nervous about that, <laughs> that guarantee, but um, Aguero never lets you down. No, it was, a, it was a very, very good run from Aguero, but it's an even better ball in from Sterling, who I think has improved mm. a hell of a lot this season with his final ball. Pep is obviously working with him. That, from a winger's point of view, I, and, and I th criticism that I've had of Raheem in, in the past is, is that he's tended to pick players out rather than just to get it in to a dangerous area and yeah. say to the centre forward, you get on the end of it, I'm going to put it into the dangerous area, second six-yard box, you get on the end of it. It's up to mm. you to do that. And I think he's done yeah. that certainly more this season. Well, he's done it a lot without this a doubt. Rather his than and his finishing Rather improved, than pick well, not, people out, he's just yeah. got to keep on doing that. It's, because it is up to the forward and then you can moan like mad yeah. at the forwards. <laughs> if you're putting it into an area and the forwards aren't getting in on the end of it but he's doing that a lot better this season okay i think we can hear from him he's with dan walker raheem sterling that is you can gary uh, raheem sterling is here alongside sergio aguera and carlos is here just in case sergio can't understand my my terrible questions uh, raheem uh, let's talk about uh, the game an impressive victory congratulations guys you're into the quarterfinals of the fa cup did middlesbrough uh, sorry did <laughs> did huddersfield give you a bit of a scare early on yeah, most definitely. Yeah. They went 1-0 up and um, we were really disappointed to concede so early, but um, this is football. They, they played really well. They were at us and they got the goal, but credit to the boys. We've done really well to dig in and show that same team spirit we've been showing over the last couple of weeks and i um, really happy to get the win here. Two goals from the man alongside you as well. Sergio, what's your assessment of the game this evening? Bueno, eh, contento por el resultado y más que nada por, por los goles, pero 
muy, muy contento por clasificar, ¿no? Yeah, I'm happy, very happy for the result, very happy for the two goals, but especially for getting through to the to the next round. How important, Reem, is this competition for you this season? Yeah, massive. Um, we want to be competing in every competition possible and winning um, as many trophies as we can. And um, the FA Cup is definitely something that we want to go all the way and, and try to win. And it was a massive step today, and um, it'll be a, a good good tie in the next round. Sergio, the guys in the studio who are watching were talking about the work that you were putting in, the passing, the running off the ball, uh, your, your attitude to the game, and the manager seemed to be applauding that on the sidelines as well. No, eh, yo solo hago mi trabajo, lo que me pide el técnico, y, y bueno, trato de, de ayudar al equipo, y por suerte eh, lo estamos haciendo bien, y por mi parte lo único que tengo que hacer es trabajar y, y tratar que, bueno, que el técnico esté muy contento. Carlos. Yeah, I only try to do my best, uh, do what the, the manager asked me to do, and basically try to help the team and try to make Guardiola happy uh, with my performances. And Raheem, finally, do you think you have three chances of silverware this season still? Um, yes, yeah, really early on, early on, but um, as I said, we're competing in every competition um, with an intention of trying to win it. So, yeah, I think we just need to keep going game by game and um, take it from there. But definitely, we want to be challenging for every single one at the end of the season. How hard have you been working on your delivery as well? Because again, the guys in the studio are talking about the, your, your provision for the other players in the team tonight. Yeah, it's something that I want to do is add goals and assist in my game and I'm um, really happy to, to be able to provide another two there today. Congratulations, guys. Enjoy the quarterfinals. Cheers. Raheem, Sergio and Carlos. Nice yeah. to meet you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> well, give us a shot of Carlos. We can <laughs> see him there. You can see him in the corner of the screen. Uh, we were talking about Raheem Sterling and his general improvement. Yeah. And especially, I think, Trevor, when you consider where he was at the end of the summer, the tournament with England, he was almost targeted in many ways by a lot of fans. Unfairly so, as well, in my opinion. But he's shown great character bouncing back. Great character, but I think he's had a mentor um, a bit special. I keep on talking about Pep, but yeah. the difference in his performance is now um, is outstanding you know I spoke about the stat earlier he's the most successful dribbler in the opposition's box end products there I think he knows his role in the team and I think that might have been after trouble in the summer he wasn't sure what his role was he, listen Brendan Rodgers said when he was at Liverpool he's a hard worker he's got a great work ethic yeah. and I think that's why we're seeing this kind of reward see, now see I don't even think he looks up then I think he, he just puts it into an area which he knows is going to be dangerous and someone's going to get on the end of it and that is very very good wide play you don't have to pick people out. Your, part of your job is, is to get it into the danger area and leave it up to the forwards to do the rest. And he's doing that very, very well. I, I, what I like about him as well this season, though, I, Tr Trevor spoke about it with Sani before the game, was <laughs> movement <laughs> off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but that's incredible. I mean, that's incredible pace. We know he's got that. But he's, he's setting off early. He's not coming mm. to the ball. He's not being negative with his movement before receiving the pass. And that's... That's the one thing I think that st stood out in this season. And one of the reasons why they're getting so much space, and we've, we've heard of reverse movement this season, if you want it to feet, you run away for... Yeah. They're doing triple, double. They're doing more than one or two movements before receiving the ball, so they can get on the half turn, front the defender up and take him on. And I think that's great to see. Mm. Uh, Huddersfield... I suppose, well, actually, there's another goal. I was going to come to Huddersfield, but let's first mention the fact that um, uh, City made a uh, fifth goal at very late in the game, didn't they, of course, that I'd almost forgotten about. Yeah. Um, Iannaccio getting on the end of things, as he tends to do. Well, th this lad's record's phenomenal. Um, his goal-scoring record, he gets himself in position, and invariably he's coming off the bench. And I know some might argue to say, well, defenders are tired, but he's... he's Producing when he's getting himself on the pitch, and that's what he's doing. Again, you see here, he probably is offside, yes, but you, you, you constantly see me. You, you guys know about this more than ever. Well, go, I'll, I'll go, go, run there, look. Go, that's go, his first run. He doesn't get the first one. He doesn't lose interest and he comes back into the six yard box for the second one. He Again, the finish, between the sticks, that, between yeah. the sticks, though, yeah. Al, every time, and, and that's what you get from him. You see players switch off all the time, and this is staying alert to the second, third phase of situations. And it's a bit of a shank, but they all count. And, and his record is, is seven goals in nine starts in the Premier League, and mm. for a young man, that is phenomenal. Yeah. Well, he's got some decent players around him as well, but um, there's no doubt that um, he can finish. Uh, Huddersfield, which I was, um, yeah. I, I got a bit premature uh, on that particular one. They didn't do themselves any harm, did they? They played, you know, they played some good stuff, particularly yeah. in the first half. And if they'd have had that chance going in the second half and got it back to three-two, yeah, I, mean, I think we certainly wanted that. I think we certainly wanted more of a game in the second half. But this was a big chance, huge chance here for Joe Lolly. He just missed times. He's jumped, doesn't he? Under a little bit of pressure from Otamendi, but he should be scoring. There's no real excuses when you're six yards out you've got a good side to the cross coming in you should be hitting the target bare minimum and it's a, it's a yeah. poor header from him really yeah
Uh, Harry Bunn will go home um, quite satisfied with his moment. So he should. Yeah. He got off to a um, very, very good start. And City were so open in the first seven or eight minutes, as we see here. They, they give him so much space to, to run into there. But the drive towards the 18-yard 18, uh, 18 box, a lovely little touch from, uh, from Billing here. And it's a good fit. He hits the target. And when you do that with this goalkeeper, you've got half a chance of it going in. You should do better, the keeper. But he should be rightly proud of, of scoring. They, they couldn't do this. They couldn't, they couldn't maintain the pace yeah. that they started with. They, they were knackered let on. They didn't have the legs <laughs> to continue it. And that was the problem. Well, it's hard when you're chasing the ball the whole yeah. game, isn't it? I, was, I mean, City with the possession that they have and the movement that they yeah. had. I mean, that is tiring. Even if it's your first team playing, let alone a lot of your reserves. Yeah, it's about levels, isn't it? Obviously, the Premier League side are a lot fitter, um, could get about the pitch a lot more. And these lads are not playing week in, week out. Nine changes from the, the team that played in the Championship yeah. at the weekend. I know they've conceded a lot of goals tonight, but isn't it refreshing that a team comes out and says, you know what, we're not going to try and get 11 men behind the ball. We're going to come here, we're going to try and enjoy it, we're going to try and make a game of it. And they certainly did that in the first half. Yeah, and, and they'll go back now. Obviously, their priority is to, to try and get back into the Premier, or to get into the Premier League. Yeah. And, and they're on the periphery of things. They are the third, you know, and they're just similar along in that position while everyone's um, looking at, obviously, what Newcastle are doing, what Brighton are doing. I think it was quite evident that David uh, Wagner wasn't on the sideline because he's very animated and he can sometimes be the difference for them. And I think he was a big miss tonight. Got a very tough game on Saturday, all they have. Really? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Who was that again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a pause. Uh, time to mark your diaries with the next live FA Cup football here on BBC One. On Monday, March the 13th, we have table-topping Chelsea playing host to a manager all too familiar with Stamford Bridge, Jose Mourinho and his Manchester United team. And before that, on Sunday the 12th of March, we have Tottenham at home to League One Millwall, a game certain to be of interest to a former England striker. Coming through the ranks at Millwall, it was kind of do or die. Millwall fans, very ferocious, uh, and not just to the opposition. You had to win the Millwall fans over, but you either died from the criticism or you stood up and thought, you know, I've got a bit about me, I'm going to go on and, and be a player, you just watch. It would have to be shame. My FA Cup memories are not fantastic at Millwall. We didn't really get going and, and have a real FA Cup run to gloat about as such. I've had a couple of close runs with the bigger clubs later on in life. Tottenham got to a couple of semi-finals. This is Sheringham. Oh, what a goal! When you get knocked out in semi-finals, you think to yourself, am I ever going to get there? Will I ever play in an FA Cup final? 1999 was a fantastic year for Manchester United. We'd won the league on the last game of the season against Tottenham. We beat them 2-1 at home. I've started in that match. You know, If I started that game, I might even be uh, starting the FA Cup final. When the manager pulled me, uh, told me that I wouldn't be playing. Very upset. I was 33. I probably had 17 or 18 years as a professional footballer and thought it had passed me by that, that I would get a chance to play at Wembley in an FA Cup final. Roy Keane's got a problem straight away, John. He's, he's limping badly. Well, this is a shaker for Manchester United in the opening five minutes. I'm sitting behind Sir Alex Ferguson. Thinking to myself, well, I'm not going on for Roy Keane, he's our midfield player. Fergie looks over his shoulder and says, Teddy, get warmed up, you're going on. Sheringham comes on. Within a minute, I'd scored the first goal, and it was a lovely goal, a little one two with Scolzi. Little ball inside to Skull. Sheringham goes again and scores! He's only been on the pitch a minute. Played really well, enjoyed it, and it worked out a great day for me. Sheringham and set up the ball, Scholes! actually get the winner's medal and have such a fantastic day in the sunshine at Wembley for Manchester United. It's one of those things that you dream of as a kid. Sheringham, who went a long time in football without a major honour, now has a championship medal and an FA Cup winner's medal in the space of a few days. When you're growing up as a young footballer, you want to you wanna win things. That's, you, don't, you don't dream about having lots of money. You dream about the glory. We wanted to win the lot. And that's exactly what we did. Just fantastic memories in them. I love talking about it. Yeah, terrific player. And it, interesting, wasn't it, that he came on in, in that cup final to score the goal. If only Newcastle had brought you on. Good point. 
<laughs> I can't remember. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Whoever said it's great getting yeah. to a cup final? You've played alongside him many times. It's only you? great if you win it at yeah, Wembley. It's, it's not a good place to be when you when you haven't won. No, Teddy Shane, you played obviously oh, with England many times. He was such a clever, intelligent yeah. footballer. We had a great relationship on the pitch. Mm. He, was, he was brilliant to play alongside. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the um, FA Cup quarterfinal uh, draw as it now stands. We've got all the. Um, teams through so um, there you have it a couple of games on the Saturday Middlesbrough against uh, Manchester City the winners here of course uh, this evening Arsenal face Lincoln City non-league side in the quarterfinals <laughs> the FA Cup uh, tough one for them though but what a day out they'll have uh, Tottenham Hotspur and Millwall that's live on BBC One on the Sunday and then a Monday obviously the uh, cracker there Monday 13th of March one for your diary at 7.45 Chelsea against uh, Manchester United uh, let's hear from the man that led Manchester Manchester City uh, to that quarter-final. Pep Guardiola, he's with Dan Walker. Pep, thanks for talking to us. Congratulations. I know the opposition scored an early goal, but you must have been happy with the reaction from your players tonight. Yeah, we know we played good in 90 minutes, so sometimes happen, receive a goal. Uh, but even in that moment, we were playing quite good. So we make a good thing against a good team. So we knew that, uh, but we are happy because we were in, in quarter-finals. I know you were impressed with Huddersfield in the first game between the two sides. How impressed with you tonight, particularly in that first half? No, in the second too. So when they were able to arrive in uh, behind our midfield line, they are a good quality players. They created the chances, but the uh, only problem we had today is uh, we miss a lot of the last pass. The last pass we arrived there in that position, attacking the fo the four back from Huddersfield, and uh, the last pass it was for centimeters was not good, and that was. A little bit our problem, but uh, okay. So we knew how tough could be, and uh, and uh, we play and and a good good performance. Just spoken to Sergio Aguero, who scored two goals for you tonight, of course, and he says he's happy to do whatever you ask of him. And he did seem to be working really hard tonight, and you were applauding him from the sidelines as well. Is that what you want to see from him? Yeah, he's the best Sergio ever. That's seen. the best you've seen him. The senior from from here today, the performance was amazing. So. Uh, uh, not just he runs, runs in the right moment, the right tempo, and uh, when that's happened, he's involved in the game, and now he's so precise with the ball. Uh, he helps us, his dribblings, his uh, his performance was top, and the same with Claudio. So his performance with the uh, with the foot uh, helped us with build up and uh, and all he did. So all the players was were were in good, in good, in good, in good mood and good performance. And you're into the last eight now. Oh, well, we've obviously cut him short there, <laughs> poor Pep. Um, he was, he was, um, anyway, I, he's obviously very satisfied with Aguero, mm. which, which has been good. Because there's been a few rumbles, hasn't there, rumblings that maybe Aguero's not happy, that Guardiola's not happy with his centre-forward? Well, I like him. I think he's a very, very good <laughs> centre-forward. His goals um, yeah. this season, again, has been, uh, or goals return has been outstanding. You're right, there has been one or two grums about him not working or whatever, but when he gets balls into the box like he did tonight, then he's a, he's a huge threat and I think he'll score goals in any team. Interesting about his philosophy. They're talking about why well, they were dangerous when they got behind us, but <laughs> the only thing I was disappointed was was our final ball, yeah. which says a lot about the way he thinks about the game. He does. He does. He's a perfectionist. Yeah. He wants to have perfect um, performances. And uh, at times, you know, we, we players make mistakes and, and get the, the, the weight of the ball mm. wrong and things like that. But listen, he'll be training hard. He gets a snapshot of what them players can do in training each week. He knows what to expect. It's interesting what he says, isn't it, about his, their final ball. They've scored, they've scored all those goals tonight and yeah. he wants to see the, the, the yeah. but rather than look at defensively yeah. where they give two or three chances mm. away yeah. to give a goal away mm. another mistake. But he, ne he never mentions that. No, well, outscoring. That's, it. That's the way he plays yeah. the game. He also gives a little... As the mention there for Bravo as well, didn't he? That he was good with his feet, which is obviously yeah. an important aspect for him. But you've got to be good with your hands as well. Well, he, he does. He, he lets so many in, doesn't he? He lets so many what you would what we would all think perceived to be easy easy shots. It lets by him. The one he's let in tonight, it's just under his body. But he is. He's better he's than just having a bad spell and a little bit confidence and everything. Perhaps I've seen him play. He's a mate. Great saves so the you know, boss perhaps, but he's better than Caballero with his feet. If I mean, he signed him oh, essentially yeah. with his feet. He's better than Caballero with his, his feet. feet are anyway. Unbelievable. Yeah. Some of them passes today into Aguero, yeah. drilled balls, little chips over the. I mean, risky, but we've so, got lots so more clever. to enjoy. Uh, we're just about run out of time. Uh, Kevin, Trevor, uh, Alan, uh, thanks very much. Uh, Manchester City have made it through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, and Pep Guardiola is buzzing in his own way. Good night. Success begins with a fellow's will. 
It's all in the state of mind. Sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Win.